How many videos have you seen about cooking the perfect steak just to end up with a mediocre crust that satisfies no one? I'm one of those guys, and as you can imagine, we are all in the same bucket. That is why I will leave it all aside today and just focus on the crust. That delicious, crispy, crunchy, and always welcome crust. A year ago, I tried an old trick to make the steaks crust better. You can see that video after you finish here. And it worked. It worked so well that I use it on many of our family reunions and even when I'm cooking for ourselves. And that got me thinking, is there any way you can improve the crusting a steak? That took me into a rabbit hole I wish I knew before. And after trying and experimenting with every product out there, I think I got it. But this is something I never test one next to the other as we are doing today. And decided to make it this way so we can all find together what is the best method for the best crust and what is not. So this morning I ran to my favorite store, Brower Meat and Fish, and got me these four juicy and good looking prime rebites for this experiment. And before you even mention it, I know I only left two there, but this is all in the name of science. And of course, I grabbed a few other stuff I needed to make this happen. Now, back at home is when we're going to start with all this craziness. Salt. Yes, salt is the first one we're going to use. And in this case, it'll be sea salt. But how do I make a better crust with salt? Easy. We start with the principle that salt, through a process, drains the cells it gets in contact with out of water, making the outside portion of the steak drier. It is important to know that after a while, the salt will dissolve into water too, and the meat will suck it back. So before that happens, we need to pat dry the steaks and make sure they end up as dry as possible. I normally allow the meat to rest with the salt on for about 30 minutes. After that, I'm patting dry and cooking. The second product we will use in this experiment will be cornstarch. Hey! Don't forget to give me a like, okay? Cornstarch is another great product to remove moist, and as we apply it to the meat, it will suck all the moisture it comes in contact with and leave the exterior of the steak dry as a desert. Hmm. As I did in our last video experiment, I will apply it to the meat and allow it to rest. But as a difference to that previous video, I will not be seasoning as salt can affect the result of this experiment. We are going to be seasoning all the steaks right before cooking. The third product will be your regular baking soda. Baking soda is also an amazing absorbent and will extract as much moist as you put it in contact with. Baking soda is considered a hydroscopic substance, which are capable of absorbing and attracting water molecules from their surroundings, which helps to reduce the moisture content of nearby surfaces, giving you this way a similar result as the previous used products. In reality, I want the outside of the steak to be as dry as it can be, as that's the main thing that will create the perfect crust on your steaks, and these products are the ones that are going to make it happen. The last product we will use will be tapioca. Tapioca is a starch extracted from the cassava root, also known for its moist reduction capability and its gluten-free qualities, making it the ideal replacement for cornstarch or baking soda on any recipe. This tapioca starch will soak all the moist it gets in contact with, and as baking soda, it does also attract water molecules from the surroundings. And now it is time to hurry up and wait. We will allow these pros to extract and suck as much moist from the steaks as possible before cooking. So, 30 minutes waiting is a requirement. After 30 minutes, I will pat dry the steaks, paying more attention to the one with the salt. And once they are ready to go, I will season them the same with salt and pepper. As you can see, I'm setting the steaks to cook indirectly or using the reverse sear method. The reason is to allow them to keep releasing water while cooking, so when we sear them, the exterior will be as dry as it can be. If you sear your steaks first and cook them after, contrary to what we are doing here, it will be more difficult for the user to escape after the steak has been sealed. So, reverse sear is a must. Once we get them all to 120 degrees internal temperature, 
it's time for the SEER. The SEER, as you can imagine, is the one process in charge of creating that amazing crust we are looking for. So there is a few fundamentals here we need to know before throwing the steaks on the fire. First, we need the heat to be at its maximum. For that, lump charcoal is the most recommended type of charcoal. There are other types of charcoals out there that can pass the 1000 degrees, but those are expensive and difficult to get. Lump charcoal, on the other hand, is easily available and can do a great job. Get your charcoals as hot as possible by any means. A fan can be a great idea, or anything else you might have at hand will work. But just make sure that when you set your steaks to sear, the heat is as impressive as it can be. Second, get your steaks close to the fire, as close as possible, and if there are flares, even better. If you get too many flares, just move the steaks around and deal with it. But under no circumstance, throw water at the fire. The results you should expect are similar to this. Miss Ninja, we have a lot of meat here today to try. Too much. Is this only for you and me? It's only for you and me. Oh my God, no. You want to pass by? Come on. Come for on. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Ninja, we are testing here only the crust. Okay. Okay, and that one is number A, number B, number C, and number D. All right? Let's go. So we're going from A to D, okay. and you tell me which one you like the crust the best. We're not talking about flavor. We're not talking about tenderness. Sure? We are not talking about none of those things. Okay. Only the crust. Let's do it then. Let's go. Let's go for number A. Number A. Really nice crust. Nice. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Different. Mm -hmm. And number B here, a little piece so we can move fast. Let's do it. Way better. Crust. Mm -hmm. Real crunchy. Real crunchy. I didn't put salt on it after it's done. None of those things. Crunchier than this one. Crunchy. All right. Number C, guys. Let's do it. Less crunchy than the first one, for sure. It has a little off flavor, number C, and the crunch is not as good as number B. Let's go for number D. Mm -hmm. All right, Miss Ninja, little piece again. Let's do it. <laughs> this is like extremely crunchy. Real crunchy, guys. Oh, wow. mm. Mm. Oh. And the flavor. Real crunchy, nice flavor. Yes. Nothing weird in there. Really nice crunchiness and crispiness outside and tenderness, in the tenderness inside and yep. juicy inside. Really good. Well, Miss Ninja, which is going to be your favorite? Number A, B, C, or D? Number D. Number D for Miss Ninja. And it's going to be number D for me too. Guys. Finally! You know what is that? No, what is it? We use tapioca to create a better crust. No way. Tapioca, guys. Really? Like the bubble tea tapioca? Like the yuca or cassava tapioca, yeah. And also they use that for bubble tea. It's awesome, guys. Ooh. You need to try this thing. I, you should. As I told you before, I tried them all, but I never put one next to the other like that. So if you want to give it a try, you can go to any Latin supermarket or maybe Asian supermarket. Yes. Then we have these things. I don't know if it's regular American supermarket have it. But, you know, for me, the best place to go and buy is always Bravo Made and fish. fish. Well, guys, let me tell you, D is number D because it's delicious, it's amazing, it's really yeah, good. Proof. You should definitely give it a try. But let me ask you something. Did we make you hungry? Did we? If we made you hungry, you had to hit us with the like. Lots and lots of likes. Subscribe to the channel, share with your friends and Let's family. Do so. And don't forget to leave your comments down there. Let me know what you think about this. If you have any idea for any other experiment, whatever, just put it down there in the comments and leaving a lobster video that we just made last week that is amazing. My lobster That's all for today, and I love you. Mm, love you too. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Bye.